due to that, I decided to put on here that we would allow other people to speak about the fire station site. At this time, there is a site on 119 that bids went out for. However, bids don't have to be accepted. So, we will allow uh, whoever wants to get up and comment. I would like to try to limit it to two to three minutes, nobody over three minutes for sure, and try to have a max of two to three, four and again, if there is any. So, who would like to go first? Take your name and how you feel about it. Tommy Reeves. I live at 1359 Montevallo Road. My concern is the uh, proposed site on Highway 119 for the new fire station. Uh, if this was the only location, I'm sure you have lived here all my life, and I will be the first one to say I'd give you my full support if this was the only location that it could go. The city has several locations on Highway 78. Highway 119 is a residential section. Highway 78 is a commercial <coughs> section. Highway 119, in my opinion, lacks visibility. And I've even heard that it's going to require two red lights to stop the traffic to get the fire trucks out. Uh, Highway 78, as far as my opinion goes, uh, has great visibility. And I've heard talk of one red light, so that ought to indicate <coughs> the visibility issue about getting the truck out. Uh, Highway 119 supports down the valley. Of course, you've got Cahaba Hills and you've got the Root Valley. Uh, Highway 78 supports Leeds High School, Leeds Elementary School, the Root Development, Cahaba Hills, uh, the apartment complexes, the business district, I-20, and by all means, the Bass Pro Shop and Grand River in addition to down the valley. It's also my understanding that uh, the Bass Pro Shop is helping fund some of this money that is going towards the new fire station. Uh, Mrs. Parkwell and Mr. Kyle has proven that the Highway 78 location uh, meets the mileage requirement for uh, our citizens down the valley. Mr. Mayor, one of your concerns uh, was the number of houses that would be passed going through Roosevelt Street and Present Street, uh, whether we put it on 119 or on Highway 78. And I've counted up the houses. I came up with 26 on the Peter Street. Uh, it, it pretty much works out to be the same. Um, the, let's talk about the borders on Highway 78. It's all commercial. The front side, the back side, the left, and the right. Talk about the borders on uh, 119. It adjoins our city park. It joins Little Cahaba River. It joins the redevelopment directly across the street. And by all means, let's talk about the property uh, looking in on the right hand side, our, one of our major water supplies, uh, Ravel Springs. Uh, does anyone know about the runoff into our drinking water uh, and what it can do uh, to the springs? Uh, I'm not sure that anybody's answered that. Uh, one of my main concerns, if I was a resident of the Root Development, uh, directly across the street and coming out of my driveway. Uh, we have flooding uh, problems in the park uh, today. I'm sure we're going to add to the flooding problems if we do decide to develop the property there. Now my number one concern and the biggest issue that I've got with this, uh, you will be building on a swamp. We, I think we all know that ground down there and, and how unstable it is. Unstable property uh, leads to the ground that can shift and settle. Is this the land you would want to build your house on? Um, and unsettling ground, uh, from my experience, you deal with problems many years down the road. Uh, to get started on the 119 project, um, 
you are going to have to clear the property, take down uh, the bad dirt, and you're going to have to fill it in with good dirt. You're going to have to raise the grade of the property and also compact the soil. Now, just to get started, that's what you've got to do on this property that I consider swampland. I'm going to estimate that somewhere between $100,000 and $150,000 that the taxpayers are going to have to pay to get this property started. Mr. Mayor, in your January the 24th work session, several council members had concerns for the 119 location. You stated, and I will quote, it's caused your concern because if it is, the cost is going to be higher on the 119 project. Now, I think there's everybody in this community has a major concern about how our money is spent. And if we can save money and have a good location, then I think that's the most logical thing that we can do. Uh, I'm going to close with kind of what I opened up with. If 119 was the, our only location, you would have my full support. From the economic and good common sense points, please reconsider the location for the fire department. Bonus, the site beside Callaway's that you can have 
service further down the valley, you'd be able to inquire about other people that would, might want to come to the sea level set leaves if you go down Highway 119. And that's something you definitely to consider. You think about cost, I teach economics at Just State. Many municipalities get very short sighted looking at the cost here and now, not like the long run cost. People say they're just short of water. That's a lie. If you look at a world globe, something like 72 percent of their surface is covered with water. It is impossible to have a shortage of water. You can take salt out of water and you can build pipelines, but there's no shortage of water. We get into the situation that if we were to look at the site behind Callaway, beside Callaway, it is possible to put islands in the ground. We've all been to the Gulf Coast. We've all seen 30 to 40 story condominiums built on sand and say, but wait, the cost is too high. So let's look at the cost over a 30 year period and the cost of the company. So I wish that you would consider moving further down the valley on either 119 or on Jimmy Rock or some of those other roads. There would be land for sale, it would be available, the land would be stable, and it would serve the valley. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Really, what the what we're listening to? Well, let's comment about anything about the fire station. But as far as the um, <coughs> Cedar Road site, the problem with it is it didn't meet the five mile requirements. This, we got to get within five miles of people out on the, the western part of town too, and it didn't meet that. That was a problem. Also, we're running into all kinds of land issues, underground springs, uh, sinkholes. The inability to hurt. Uh, it didn't allow for us to just run with two fire stations. That's the problem with that. The two, a fire station, we figured it up, the chief and I say, we figured it up. The fire station probably cost us, manpower wise, around $200,000 a year. Have to have a per two people every other, every third, you know, day. So that's the minimum. And you got, you know, so that's one of the other issues. That, but we got to looking at the, the five mile rule on the uh, people out in the western part of town. They didn't meet it, they didn't come close to some of them. So we, we couldn't cover everybody. So we had to either go further out on the Rex Lake Road where they want $13 a square foot, or we had to look at something different. And that's what the residual road problem is. Okay, it's not that we don't want to get everybody a fire station around town, uh, you know, but. Cost and the ability to get right in the middle and serve everybody. So that's what the problem with Zuko was. And all but I think the main is, issue now, and, and, and I'm sure one day if we can get to a third fire station, but in a couple of years we're going to be living on three cents, and we've got to try to prepare for that. So it's going to be it's going to be tougher. So two stations really serve us better. That's what brought all this on. Uh, somebody that's against the uh, 119 station or something, that y'all want to step up or Mr. Reeves say what y'all want him to say? I mean, what y'all agreed with? Or is it, if not, is there somebody for it? Another person for it and then we'll shut it down. That it? Okay. Alright. We'll move on we get to the actual item I and then we'll take it up then. We appreciate it. Appreciate y'all's comments. I know everybody's concerned about getting a fire station. It's, uh, people down the valley's rates are unbelievable. People, somebody coming to their rates that went up ten folks from three hundred to three thousand dollars a rate. So I know it's a problem. Alright, resolution B.
motion that we pass resolution 2011-0206 concerning the purchase of documents for the software. I'll second. Ms. Carville got the second on that. I appreciate it. Uh, any discussion? All those in favor of 2011-0206 related to software, say aye. Aye. All those folks say no. All right. Let's see. Item C, 2011-0207, relating to door security. Let's see what this is about. All right. Go ahead. This is uh, currently, um, we've got in the consolidated in there, I'll well, back up a step, is uh, there's one coded MEG lock door that the police have been sent out. This is to update that, bring that to standards, as well as a few back doors that they have, and something for City Hall. As we said, you know, seeing it on the counter, people just walk on in, we have no idea what's happening in there. Walk in without being monitored. Now, not to come in the front door. Not the front door, no, it's to go the next behind the counter. Back so behind the police yeah. station and the back door of the police station. And that is correct. Yeah, I got that, but I'm talking about on the city hall side. We're not going to put a wall. The last the door front. will still be okay. wide. Right. We'll still be able to make it to the counter. But to the counter. That is correct. Yes, that is correct. Gotcha. That's where our computer is going to be. That is correct. Right. Okay. All right. This is also a budgeted item. Okay. Okay. Right. Motion. I move that we uh, um, approve resolution 2011-0207, authorizing the expenditure for security door locks. Second. Second. Have you checked the real prices on these? Does that mean no one's been talking about three dollars? Six. 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 It's uh, and it's kind of like thinking for the future a little bit. Uh, Databases will be owned by the city, the program is owned by the city, and it can be incorporated to other buildings down the road if the city so chose to. Plus the we cards have, that you already have, the time cards, are, are the proximity readers. I mean, they, re they read the cards are read by the proximity readers. That is correct. Any other questions? Well, what you're saying is awesome. The total is $6,670. We'll get it installed and set up and trained.
first offense for yard, yard sale permits. Uh, it says, for the city of Leeds recognizes the necessity of charging a fee for yard sales and registering those sales. However, the city also recognizes the potential for a changing population. Therefore, the city also recognizes the potential, potential for omissions and mistakes. Due to that fact, the city recognizes that, some, that something more substantive than a warning is necessary to enforce this requirement. However, a normal citation for a first offense could be excessively burdensome. The city wishes to institute the following policy. During an immediate seven-day period following the violation, the side individual may acquire a permit with a penalty double the permit fee, plus an administrative cost necessary to police this action and administer paperwork. Administrative fee is currently assessed at forty dollars. That's what I recommend. What I wrote, y'all can change that. In lieu of any citation for a first offense for failure to acquire a yard sale permit, a late fee will result in a total of forty-six dollars. That would be double three dollars plus forty dollars permit administration if paid within seven days. Therefore, an ordinance officer or representative city may issue a citation not enough for that will not go into effect for seven days from the date of the citation. Fair to pay and acquire a late permit result in the original citation becoming effective after seven days. That would be calendar days and not working days. That would apply only to a first time offense. Any subsequent offenses would be treated as a normal violation. And you can read where I've got examples of a dispute. It says any disputes for whether this is a first time offense be left to the discretion of the enforcement officer. Examples would be man and wife. A one time man might say, I'm running this yard sale. Six months later, the wife might say, I'm running. Also, you need to have example two. Address fails to obtain a permit for first offense six months later. Same thing happens. In the interim, the property has changed ownership. In this case, it will be up to the enforcement officer to do due diligence, but the burden of proof will be on the side of the individual to show the circumstance within seven days. All right. That uh, is what I said I would try to write up from the work set. And uh, it allows for you know, the fact that we got to send somebody around to do it. But we need to keep up with if people running businesses in their front yard, things like that. And so if there's any, if y'all want to look at it, prove it as written, or make recommended changes. Mayor, I think this is it, exactly as we discussed it in our uh, work session. So I would, I would make a recommendation that we pass resolution 2011-0209. Second. Uh, any discussion? Council, I appreciate y'all looking over this and restructuring this because I know uh, the one lady I've talked to is going to be a burden over the cost of it. And it just shows that we are trying to work with people. And I appreciate that very much. Thank you, Mr. Kyle. Any other discussion? Mayor, I have a question. Did, did you mean discretion as opposed to discrepancy in the, in the dispute with the last whereas? Oh, yeah. Kevin? <laughs> <laughs> the discretion. Yeah. I, well, actually, I dictate this stuff because I'm thinking it up. Kevin's supposed to F7 these things. Well, I, I appreciate that. Chief. I called about a couple of times. Okay, you guys, where are they? Do is D-U-E, not D-O. <laughs> 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 Thank you. Thank
responsibility of the one not to the side and try to do our due diligence of uh, how this site would work with the block on the fire station. Uh, one of the things that we did, we looked uh, in terms of site distance, we went out and shot the site distance and we were able to meet uh, a driveway permit for 119. Uh, we met with the highway department. They had no problem permitting uh, a site driveway in that location, it will have to have a, an emergency signal uh, that the fire station can use uh, with an hour. Uh, we also did a geotechnical study because this area is low. I was concerned that there might be sinkholes on the site. Contour engineering came in and uh, drilled the site to see where the rock was. The rock varies on that site uh, from eight and a half feet in one corner to about two feet deep on the uh, majority of the site. Uh, we have got their recommendations as to how to install hill on this site to bring it up to an elevation which is above the 100 year flood, which is required by ordinance. I also had a contractor, a local contractor, look at a preliminary design that we had to come up with cost. And they, at that time, we had estimated cost uh, of filling that site and bringing it up to play at $75,000. Uh, one of the things that changed when we went into the final design, we went to a three-base station as opposed to a two-base station, so we could eliminate one fire station, and so that expanded the footprint uh, some, and the uh, fire chief also required 15 parking spaces on the site, so that, that required us to have some additional fuel uh, to the site. Uh, so we went to bids, uh, which that was December 28th when I left the letter. We uh, passed a resolution, I believe it was January 3rd, to uh, solicit bids, uh, which uh, we uh, advertised the bids, uh, both in the uh, Leeds News and Birmingham uh, News, uh, took bids, and we had uh, 12 bidders take out uh, bid packages, and we received uh, a total of 11 bids on the project. The low bid uh, was submitted by Walker Patton uh, Company in the amount of $105,007.50. <coughs> At this time, uh, you can uh, award, I've made a recommendation to uh, award the bid to the lowest and best bid, which is Walker Patton, at $105,750. I believe the second bid of this uh, was 105875 and then the bids went, went up from there. Uh, at this time, you can uh, vote to award it. I would make it subject to, if you do vote to award it, uh, if the Water Board has concerns about their wellhead protection, I would make uh, the construction methods and the uh, geotechnical report available to them. Back from rural water that the impact and went to the spring before we actually award contracts. You can award it subject to that. Um, I have a question. I'm looking at what all this bid includes, and one of the concerns that obviously we keep hearing about is where is the water going to go if you build this up? This is a low place that holds water. Yeah. You're going to bring it up above the current level, above the floodplain, and we People are worried about where's, where's that water going? Is water. it going to flood? The, and I don't see anything on here about drainage, piping for that, to move that water. This is strictly dirt water. All, all we're doing is bringing it to pad level, to pad ready condition. The storm drainage will be addressed when we actually do the station. Now, you have two ditches on both sides of this, so you're raising it well up from there, and the, the property will be crowned where we go to the the silt fencing is well, silt the fencing Oh, I, I don't know, I understand that, but those <coughs> little ditches overflow now. So that was one of the concerns we talked about was when you bring that up, that water's all got to go someplace, you're displacing it. Yeah, yeah, I, I understood about silt fencing. But, but the fact, to, to answer your question, all we're doing is making this pad ready mm -hmm. because if you bid this out as a, as a total package, fire station general contractor do it, then they're going to be marking it up about an additional 15% or more just to, just to make That's sure. 
that's what I was getting at. The drainage we're going to have to put in to handle some of this is... Will, will be in the fire station. Okay. Because so. it's not in this. That's correct. Okay. I, that was all I was trying to make sure I was understanding that this 105000 is just site prep work. That, that would be clearing the site. Uh, we do have unsuitable soils in there mm -hmm. that will be put into the rear. And we'll actually make kind of a big yard area to the rear. Yeah, I know this regrassing. I know this Yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. Okay. Do you foresee any kind of flooding uh, issues with it? We, we've uh, actually tied the elevations to the uh, FEMA uh, uh, flood data. And we're uh, meeting our zoning regulations for floodplain ordinance to be above 100 feet. Mm -hmm. <laughs>
two things that had to take place with the fire uh, uh, truck. Now, I understand you, know, you got to have a place that's big enough to turn around in front of the building, or you got to have a rear end. Or both. Or both. That's right. And so, I don't know, but I have the feeling that some of the people, up, some of the council people up here would like you to give them a, a preliminary idea of what that might why you have to do it. Uh, one of the things that that I've heard is that you, know, you would have to move it back from the entrance because of all the traffic up here. You'd have to back it up to get the pads away from so you wouldn't be pulling across in front of people. Yeah, and, and I looked at it just from a, from a windshield survey. Right. What, here's what you'd have to come up with to, to do the got a very wide mixing area out front that needs to be addressed in front of City Hall anyway. No, that was the island. Where you yeah. got the island and then you got you got fifty to sixty feet of, of paving and no striking. Um, you got a lot of traffic patterns in there. A fire station will compound that. So one of the things that you have to address is the traffic patterns and, and study that and get the striking right, remove the island and that sort of as part of that process. Now, I don't have a price on that because uh, I really haven't looked at it. The way to address the fire station coming off the of, uh, of, of park drive is the way I would look at it. I haven't laid it out or anything. I'm going to use a real wide apron so that the fire trucks would come in and have like a 30 foot radius and then a big open area so the trucks could come in and swing in. This is about 75 feet then back into the station. If they did it from front load. From front load now. In, in doing that, when you start having trucks of that size swinging into a park area, you're more than likely going to concrete that entire area. Because you're going to have you, you, the pavement just would be torn up really quickly. Um, you would have to be at least 75 feet off the driveway. way. You're building 60. I think you got enough space out there. I haven't shot the grade to see how much you might have to level out, but uh, I feel like you've got enough space out there. The other thing that we've got to look at, the logical path coming out of Park Drive is to go down Roseburg. Uh, and I haven't had a uh, highway park come out here to look and see if they will or require an emergency signal. The other thing is I don't know their feeling Some upgrade there to do that, we have to get the state's permission. And just doing a windshield survey, I think we can get our right in at a rear entry. I don't think the site distance will warrant a left in also. Which is, if, if you're coming back to the call, we just have to make another route and go that way. It'd be logical to come up a rear, have a, a, a rear bay door open. Thank you. 
basically uh, topsoil all the way down to the top of the rock. Yeah. And what we're going to do is take the trees off in that area, limit the tree removal to, to a point you know, where we don't make it look unattractive, but take enough trees off to waste that, that soil, then have a footprint for a fire station. Uh, and, uh, we're, but we're not fracturing the rock. We're not cutting rock. We're not getting a whole lamb out. that go to the site and give it a clean bill of health. If we do discover that there is an underground tank out there, then that would have to be removed before the fire station. You know what I'm going to cost them to save you money? If it's out there, it's going to have to be removed anyway. Yeah, we're fine if we got it. We're fine if we got it. Well, that's what I'm talking about. So if you don't go looking for it, you don't have to.
stipulations, which is what we've done for the last 20 years is barter with them, of give us time, give us time, then they'll come back and say, okay, you didn't have deficiencies in this area. We'll give you six weeks or 30 days to fix it. So even though it's built, you still have to go through their process, and then they release the new rates July 1st. Rates are released on July 1st if you don't get built to the fall? Is that what you're saying? Well, no. Depending on when your homeowner's comes up is when you get built. Because the ISO man, I met with him, he said he would come back out here and, and reevaluate us as a favor to us as soon as we can get him here. All, all I'm trying to ask you is when, if he comes back out here and reevaluates us and changes our rates, is that going to affect us this year? Insurance. And that may vary per insurance carrier. Well, no, the insurance service organization is like the umbrella. Right. Everybody follows so He comes out here and reevaluates us before October. He like could make an exception, yes. And we could get, and it could go on this year's road. Possibly. Yeah. You're saying it could, I mean, this it is, could. Is, is it can or can't? It That's could. All I'm asking. She's just saying it could. It could. I mean, we would have to negotiate. Really I would think after 20 years of with negotiating with them. Alan's just trying to do other stuff to get it down to, like getting the fire tower and the barn building and training, all kinds of stuff that, that's over the, you know, extra that we're trying to do to help get it down some. Uh, all I want to say is uh, I think people are, one misconception people have is that we have a lot of options for this. We really don't. Frank's got a map. So we only have two stations. We don't have many options. We look. We spent two days after our work session, Kevin and Frank and I, and Alan, riding around looking if there's other sites. Short of buying up commercial property and tearing it down, uh, the, you know, a lot of people think that we could run up and build it on the school road. We got the school traffic. Plus, the school has asked me to consider that land for school. Other schools. Okay, so we can't build on that land. We'd be taking up land that they may have, you know, if they get overflow for another school. Uh, some of the other properties people talk about had some logistical problems with drainage uh, that weren't big enough. Uh, those things that the state was coming in to do in the future, like at President Street, that would affect some of that. Uh, I mean, uh, we beat our heads against the wall, try to find some third site that would work. Uh, if you found something that was centrally located that would be within five miles of everything, you, I, we had to put it right smack dab, even more in the middle of a residential area. The 119 site has got no house on the left, no house behind it, no house on the right, and a house across the street. That's true. Uh, the Army site doesn't have any houses around it except the house of the one house across the street. The problem with it uh, was the fact that we may have a splash park, we may have we got city hall, we got court, we got civic center, we got football, we got the baseball. So if y'all want to him to look at the army site and you can only have a two week window to give you some kind of ideas about it and decide what y'all want to do. Let the Waterworks Board have two weeks to do this other deal they're going to do. Bring it back two weeks, let him present it, and then let's let's vote. Would y'all like to do that? I, I like to speak to that. Okay. Uh, I am 100% against putting it at the armory site. I don't have a feeling. I'm I have no feeling this way or this way. Um, I trust what you've done. Uh, that, that's my opinion. I think if we put that up here, I'm up here a lot. The traffic for the sports activities, uh, for everything that goes up, and, and our plan for a splash park, just... It's a very, it would make it a very dangerous place for people to drive in and out of. Extremely dangerous. And um, I, for one, am not willing to take that chance. If that 
many lives coming in and out because of the fact that the fire station cannot face the street, it has to face the city hall.
It's too costly. It costs a lot to put these little packages on. Well, let's get the estimates. How about this? In the two weeks, we get the waterworks board to promise they can get us something. Mr. Spencer does preliminary, uh, what we just talked about. And uh, we, anybody that can make a recommendation on my Third site meets our requirements. See if y'all can find them. If not, bring it back in two weeks with all this information and we'll decide. Did anybody want to make a motion on that? I'll make a motion. Anybody want a second? Stop. Okay. Well, I think we've probably had a pretty good discussion, but how about on the motion? Do anybody want to make a good discussion? Motion on the discussion? I mean, discussion on the motion. Mm -hmm. Thank you. 